Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cancer Podcast, where the focus is on prostate cancer in this episode. How much do you know about prostate cancer? Do you know anyone in your family who's been diagnosed with prostate cancer or currently being treated for prostate cancer? Did you know that prostate cancer is also quite common? Why is that? What about treatments available in Trinidad and Tobago? Who are at risk and who needs to get tested as soon as possible? Dr. Akash Maniam is an oncologist. He is currently practicing in the UK. He's also clinical director of the Caribbean Cancer Research Initiative. He joins me today for this episode. Thank you very much for having me. It's good to be here. Well, before we get started with today's topic, I have two questions for you, Dr. Maniam, from our previous show. We spoke about breast cancer screening and testing. This is from someone who has concerns of her own about breast examinations. So she wanted some more information about breast examinations and how often a woman should go get screened. Yeah, okay. So for anyone worried about breast cancer, for a breast cancer patient or relative, etc., the most important thing is breast awareness. And what I mean by that is being aware of what your normal breast texture feels like because it can change sometimes with the menstrual cycles, with hormone levels, etc. And just examining yourself once a month and being accustomed to what is normal is the most critical. And secondly, anytime there's anything out of the range of normal, you go and get tested. You go and see a doctor, let them examine you and have a mammogram or an ultrasound or both. But for regular screening, any woman from the age of 40 up should have a mammogram Uh, at least once every two years if we're looking at the WHO or once a year if we're looking at the American guidelines. But I think at least once every two years from the age of 40 for most women is fine. If you have a few family members with breast cancer in your family, then you're likely going to have to start much earlier, even at the age of 20 in some cases. But that's a bit different. And at that point, you really need to get specialist advice. But for most women, age 40, a mammogram, once every two years minimum. All right, moving on to our next question. Are there any cancers that can be cured? Because when you hear cancer, you think immediate death sentence. That's a very good question. Look, honestly, we've made tremendous strides in almost every cancer over the past 20 years. I would say that for almost every single type of cancer, there is a cure rate. But the rate of cure really depends on how early it is caught. More than anything else, if you catch cancers early, even some cancers that are more scary or more aggressive, like let's say pancreatic cancer or ovarian cancer or lung cancer, there is still a chance of cure and you do have some patients who are cured. So I would say that almost all cancers have a chance of cure, some obviously more than others, like breast cancer or prostate cancer, for instance, but catching it early is always critical. Great. Hope that was helpful. Thank you for asking questions. And if you have any questions, you can always inbox me on Facebook and we'll be more than happy to tackle in our next episode. Today, we talk about prostate cancer. And as mentioned earlier, prostate cancer is a common cancer. So, Dr. Maniam, what does the research tell us? So why is this still common? Yeah, so I'm glad that we chose prostate as this one because it's it's very similar to breast cancer in that regard. It's it's the most common cancer in men. Just like we said, breast cancer, about one in eight women will get it. Prostate cancer is almost identical. About one in eight men will get prostate cancer in their lifetime. And I mean, most people don't know seven or eight other men. And if we just put it in that sort of context, it, it really is, you know, it's a frightening number. It's a very high number. Um, so about one in eight, although... As we're going to discuss uh, shortly, that one in eight is not uniformly applied across the world or even across different races and ethnic groups within a country. But one in eight is a good number to keep in mind. So let's talk about Trinidad and Tobago. What are our statistics for prostate cancer? So Trinidad and Tobago, like many of the other Caribbean islands, actually has a disproportionately high burden of disease. And while there was some incredible work done by a few pioneering urologists, uh, particularly from South, the true incidence of prostate cancer is a bit more difficult to define because we're not picking up all of the cases of prostate cancer for a variety of reasons. And I suspect that whatever data is out there is an underestimate of what we're seeing because we're seeing hundreds of new cases of prostate cancer a year, about let's say 700 per year 
is a fair enough figure to look at, which is a large number when you consider our population is under one and a half million. So it is very common within Trinidad and Tobago. Tobago actually in particular has an extremely high rate of prostate cancer, but I think it's higher than that still. Mm. We're just not capturing it all. Are we seeing a lot of younger men being diagnosed with prostate cancer? It's a difficult question to answer. So yes and no. So with respect to prostate cancer, the biggest risk factor, quite simply, is age. It is, a, it is pr pr primarily an age-related cancer. The older a man gets, the more likely he is to get prostate cancer. And that holds true across ethnic and racial discrepancies in society. But in Trinidad and Tobago, in the Caribbean in particular, there are lots of younger men with prostate cancer. So a lot of the data from North America, from Europe, will typically show that, say, for Caucasian males, you're looking at men in their 60s, 70s, 80s, whereas in Trinidad and Tobago, particularly among Afro-Caribbean men, you do see prostate cancer more frequently in men in their 50s, sometimes even 40s. It's not that we're picking them up more now than before in that regard. It's just we have a higher incidence than in Western societies of seeing prostate cancer at a younger age. Well, apart from age, what are the other risk factors that we know of? So this is still very much a matter of debate. Unlike with, say, breast cancer, where, you know, things like cigarette smoking have been and obesity have been conclusively linked with prostate cancer, the data is not that clear. Age is by far the biggest risk factor, but things like family history definitely play a role. So, for instance, if you have a father or brother in your family with prostate cancer, you are two and a half times more likely to have prostate cancer, which is a big thing if your risk is already about you know, 12%, and we're looking at two and a half times, you're talking about, let's say, a 30% risk of prostate cancer. That's not small. Mm -hmm. um, so family history definitely plays a role. Uh, genetics also plays a role in a different way. Some people have genetic mutations that are passed down that, in, that can cause prostate cancer, although this is quite rare. But of the conclusively proven thing, really, it's age and family history above everything else. The roles of diet and lifestyle are still being fleshed out. Well, keeping this in mind, and just as it is important for a woman to go and have a pap smear and, and a breast examination done to rule out any possibilities of cancer, and uh, this falls under early detection, it is important for a man to have a prostate examination. But we know, we know that men, most men, aren't as uh, proactive when it comes to healthcare, especially with a prostate examination. So when should a man go and have a prostate exam? You're absolutely right. I mean, it, it is there is a di difference between men and women accessing care. And it's more complex because breast cancer is a lot easier to pick up than prostate cancer because the most common symptom of prostate cancer is nothing. And most yeah. men with prostate cancer have no symptoms at all, whereas, you know, breast cancer, you're expecting a lump. So it's very difficult in that regard uh, to pick it up at that early, early stage. And I mean, complicating that is also the fact that most men know that the, the, the way to test for prostate cancer is with a blood test, but also with a rectal examination. And that's something that obviously has a taboo in, in some men and in some parts of society. And some men don't want to come in to have their prostate checked because of that. Um, whereas I think, you know, many more women are generally more forthcoming when it comes to that, because there are some health conscious differences in behaviors in some aspects, but not across the board. I would say that for most men in, in Trinidad, I think age 40 is a reasonable time to start being screened, ideally with a prostate exam and a blood test for something called the PSA, and that should be done once a year. That is what we should be doing. The, the standard for screening is not uniformly accepted. It is not standard practice across the world at all. But I think taking into context our high rates of prostate cancer and the high rates among younger people, it's prudent to start younger and regularly to be able to catch it early. For those of you just joining in, this is a conversation with oncologist Dr. Akash Maniam. And today we're talking prostate cancer. Dr. Maniam, you made mention of a test called the PSA. Can you just tell us a little bit more about that? So PSA stands for prostate-specific antigen. It is essentially a protein that's found on the surface of prostate cells, both healthy prostate cells and cancerous cells, but the level goes up 
um, it's it's higher in people with cancer. It is not a perfect test by any means, but if it is higher than normal, it's it's like a check engine light for the doctor. It says, okay, maybe there's something going on there. Maybe we need to investigate this in more detail to pinpoint it. And if it's normal, it gives a, a good level of reassurance. So it's just a simple blood test. It's very commonly done. It's widely available within Trinidad in the public and private sectors. And it's a very easy one for people to do. Well, someone listening right now might be saying to themselves, well, I'm young, I'm strong, I'm healthy, I don't have any family history of prostate cancer, so why even bother with a prostate exam and a, a blood test? What do you say to that person? I think if you have a family history, the, the need to get tested is higher, but I think the need is high for everyone, mm-hmm. for, for all men full stop, because the incidence is higher in the Caribbean, and our resources and infrastructure to deal with prostate cancer are more challenged than, you know, in, let's say, well-resourced settings, say, in North America or Western Europe, etc. So it's very important to catch it early. It's more important in our countries because time is everything and, and being able to access timely care within the system is critical. It's better for the people, better for the physicians, etc., looking after them to be able to pick these up early rather than wait for it to be late. So I would always disagree that even if one doesn't have a family history, screening and getting yourself checked every year is always a good idea. It's like even if someone doesn't have heart attacks or diabetes in their family, they should still be getting themselves checked every year. It's just honestly, it's like getting your car checked. It's better than waiting for the check engine lights to come on. It's better just to get it checked regularly to prevent any problems and deal with them at an earlier stage. Let's move on to treatment. How is prostate cancer treated in Trinidad and Tobago? Unlike many other cancers, For many men with prostate cancer, you might not actually need to do anything straight away. Depending on what the doctors find, depending on the type of prostate cancer, how aggressive it is, the stage, etc. Some men, you can just watch them. You can just check them regularly. Because in those patients, sometimes prostate cancer can take many years before it becomes a problem. But if it's a little more aggressive or a little more advanced, then you're looking at things such as surgery to remove the prostate. Um, you're looking at radiotherapy, so radiation directed at the prostate. And you're looking at what we call hormonal therapy, where we give medication, either say injections or tablets or both, to starve the, the cancer of testosterone because testosterone fuels the majority of prostate cancers. And for most people, you have one or a combination of those options to deal with it. And in many men, if you pick it up early, the chance of long-term survival, the chance of cure, the chance of not having active cancer for decades is extremely high. It's honestly one of those cancers with the highest long-term survival rates if caught early. Dr. Maniam, let me just go back to a prostate exam. Now, I know that we've had amazing advancements in testing and screening for cancers over the years, but why is it that we still rely on a rectal examination? for prostate uh, screening? I mean, maybe if we had something less intense, like an MRI or something, I don't know, like a scan, uh, maybe more men might come forward because it really is a major turnoff for a lot of men to even consider a rectal examination, much less to actually have it done. We've made a lot of advances in imaging, that is true. There are very specific MRI scans that, that give you extremely high-resolution pictures of the prostate, but that should never replace the easy and widely available tests that we have. They should augment them, but an MRI of the prostate is significantly more costly than just having a prostate exam and a blood test. And I don't think it's something that's scalable or that we can do for everyone. But if the blood tests show that the PSA is high, if the doctor feels that the prostate is not feeling quite right, in those situations, then you go on to have further tests. And MRI in that situation is a perfectly good test to look at it in more detail, and then even a biopsy to take a sample from it. But it's not something that we would just do on everyone. So I would st- I would still say that even though we have really nice, sophisticated imaging available, nothing replaces someone examining the prostate. And it hasn't done so in any setting, no matter how well or, or I guess, well-resourced or stocked their mm-hmm. healthcare systems are. A prostate exam and a blood test are still absolutely standard for everybody. 
You've been listening to the Cancer Podcast with a focus on cancer, prostate cancer with oncologist Dr. Akash Maniam, who is currently practicing in the UK, but he's also clinical director with the Caribbean Cancer Research Initiative. There is lots of information available and uh, there are services you can also access through the CCRI. Dr. Maniam, as we wrap up, why don't you tell us more, particularly about the telehealth service? Sure. Um so this service is to provide really advice, reassurance, support, um, further information about prostate cancer or any cancer and the management of it to any adult in the Caribbean who wants to. It is obviously free and we're just happy to provide help and support and help to demystify some of the com- complex concepts within cancer care that you feel you're not able to understand as well as you'd like or you just want to discuss more. Anyone who's interested can just reach out to us, reach out to the CCRI the best way to do that is to go onto the website, um, ccrinitiative.com, and you can contact us directly through there. The email address is there, the phone numbers or WhatsApp numbers, everything is there. You can just reach out and one of us will get in contact with you and help to direct your queries and answer them.